Hi there, welcome to another training by the Hanover 4 H Clubs. Today we are at the Georgia 4 H Center where we'll be looking at apiculture. Our trainer today is Mr. Nikki Ennis, the center manager for the Georgia 4 H Center. Please look at the demonstration and learn something from what he will be doing today. Welcome to Georgia Forage Training Center. Today we are looking at beekeeping, apiculture. But what is apiculture? Apiculture is the wearing of honey bees for our economic benefit. All right, what are bees? Bees is a stinging wing insect that produces pollen, honey, and wax. Relatives of the honeybees, you have the Australian honeybees, you have the Indian honeybees, and you have the European honeybees. Now we're going to look at site selection. When selecting your site, you must always do scouting and look for a rich vegetative area. What I mean by a rich vegetative area, we're talking about flowering plants that produces pollen and nectar. If we should be placing an area where less flooding. Avoid flooded area, also avoid too much hill. Your apron must be placed in an area where it is more comfortable for the beekeeper to manage. For argument's sake, when your bees is placed in a flat area, it is much easier to access, easy access to find both your motor vehicle so that you can carry your honey and your boxes easily. You must also Place your apron away from built up area. When I say built up area, away from the public per se. Do not place your apron too near to public places, for argument, schools, hospitals, etc. etc. Because the bees is easily interrupted by noise and activities. So do not place your apron even although the bees need vegetative um, to to produce their pollen and nectar. You, you don't need to place the apron near where a lot of workers are in the field because that will also attract the bees and the bees will sting them as well. Also, you must, when placing your apron, you must always pro, uh, make sure that there is availability of water. If there is no available source of water in the area, you must provide some water. You can use colorful containers where you place sticks at it in the water so that the bees can float on it and the bees don't get drowned. All right. Also, you must always place your apron where the bees can get shelter, from, especially from the midday sun. The midday sun, too much midday sun is not good for the bees. So you must always place your apron where the bees can get some shade. If, there, if, you place your ape, if you have to put your apron in an area where you cannot get any shade, you, the beekeeper, must provide some form of shade for the bees. For example, some of the artificial shade you can use is like the same shade cloth that you use for the um, erecting of greenhouse or shade house that black, what we call saran cloth. It is called saran cloth. You can use that as a housing over the bees to, to, to pro, 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 provide shading for them. Also, drainage. Drainage is very important for your apron because if you place your apron and it is water is running, not so much flooding, but the water that is running in the, on the hive will, will cause the boxes to be rot. So you don't want to place your apron too low on the ground so that the water affects them. So now we are going to look at some of the, um, the equipment, tools and products from the bees. First, we are going to look at the equi equipment. So some of the equipment we have we use in the hives are bee cover. The cover is used to protect the bees from rain and wind. Next we use frame. Oh, the cover is made of wood and metal. As you can see, wood and metal. The frame 
we have two frames. We have the wooden frames and we also have the plastic frames. The wooden frame is made from wood and wire. And we give a little start of foam foundation, which is, which is that made from the wax as well. Then we have hive body. The hive body can be used as brooding box and super. In the brood box, you carry 10 frames with queen, queen, one queen, plenty of workers, and a few drones. Then we go to the bottom board. You can see clearly, this is what the bottom board is like. It's made from wood also. It is used for the flooring of the hive. We also have another hive body which we call the shallow hive. This, this shallow hive is mainly used for super. So for argument's sake, we have a first super here and if the nectar flow is in peak, you would add another super. So which add a, and that's why we use this shallow super, it make it more easy to carry because when it's honey tiny, honey is very heavy. So when you use this shallow box, you can manage it much easier than to carry the original hive. Alright? So this is for the equipment for the bees. Now, the tools that we need to use in the beehive. First, the beekeeper must have a, you must get your smoker and your veil. The smoker is used to smoke the hive to calm down the bees. The veil, this is a full suit veil. So when you peer this veil, this veil is used to protect your head, your hand, and your upper body from sting. And as I said before, two super, two smoke I have here. We have a small one and a big one. The small one is for a new starter with about 10 hive of bees. But when you're a big farmer, you need to use a big smoker. It lasts you longer. You also need gloves. Some beekeepers don't use gloves. Some, for the beginners, a um, beekeeper, I would recommend you use gloves because when you be sting, you might want to run and leave your bees. And I don't want that to happen. So you can buy either the plastic gloves or the cloth one. So it's, you choose which one is more economic to you. All right. Other tools we use are uncapping knife. The uncapping knife is used to uncap the frame when you are going to do extraction. The brush, the brush is used to brush. When you're reaping honey, you use the brush to brush the bees gently from the frame. For argument's sake, this is the frame and it has plenty of bees on it. So instead of you, when you shake, all the bees won't come off. So you need a brush to make a gentle brush to brush off all the bees. Because you don't want to carry any bees in the house where you're doing your extraction. Also I have here um, is a um, pollen trap. The pollen trap is used to collect pollen from the bees when the bees come in from the field with the pollen. Because the bees carry the pollen on their legs, which we call that the pollen basket. So they will have to fight their way through this area before they enter the hive. So by doing so, the pollen will fall off their legs and we, the farmer will capture the pollen in this. Alright, next, oh, the extractor. An extractor is used to extract honey. You have various type of size of extractor and type as well. This is the manual one. You also have the electrical one, but this is the manual one. You have from two frame upward. All right, how the extractor is, the manual one is used. You place the frame when uncapped, as I said before, when uncapped the only, only, only frame, the comb, the excess comb from the, from the frame, you place it in the extractor like this. This one carries four frames. Then you give it a gentle spin. And the force of this, the honey will flash out from the frame and the side of the drum and it will run down here and you get your bucket and you collect your honey and you strain it to the bottle to the market all right so the products that we have now that the bees produce the three main products that we the bees produce that will make your money so we're talking about business here now one your honey the honey can be used 
for a wide range of things. You can use the honey to, as a sweetener to sweeten your tea. Use it to bake for the people who want to use sugar. It also can be used as a medicine for cold. You get your garlic and stuff like that. You soak with your honey and you have a medicine. You also can use that sweetener, as I said, doing your juice and all of that. Pollen. The pollen is very rich in protein. You can either eat it just as it is, or you can blend it with your juice. For especially for the men who want to see it strong up. <laughs> Alright, the wax. The wax is a very important product as well. The wax is a very important product as well. A lot of people can't do without the wax. The BP keeper can't do without the wax either. The beekeeper needs the wax for one. Give the bees. You use the wax to give the bees a start. So you make a, a use it to make comb foundation. And this is the, this is what the comb foundation looks like. So this is a start to encourage the bees to work more faster and you get more product production going out of your bees. Also you use the wax for you can make polish, candles, and also ear products. So and the shoemaker use it also and dressmaker to, to, to wax their thread. We are heading into the apron now to do a demonstration on how we feed the bees. But people might ask why you feed. We have a period where we call dirt period. And this dirt period simply means when there is no food for the bees. Why? A certain time of the year, like now, now is November. The bees cannot find any flowering plant that produces. Remember, the bees supported by pollen or nectar. At this time, they cannot find any pollen or nectar. So you, the beekeeper, because you have removed their honey, because we use the honey for, as a business to sell and make money. There is no honey nor pollen in the hives. So what we do, we have to feed the bees with sugar. How we feed the bees? We can feed them two ways. You can either feed them dry or liquid. So when you feed them dry, you can feed the bees into containers. We have the containers in the hive. When we reach to the hive, we'll see the container. But what we're going to demonstrate now is the mixing of the liquid. So what we do, we mix two parts sugar, one part sugar, two parts sugar to one part water. Sorry. Two, one, two, one. So you have two sugar, one water. It's all right. This is the, this is one part. So if you throw one cup of sugar, you're going to if you throw two cup of sugar, you're going to use one cup of water. It's all right. So we go on two, three, four, five, six. So if we have six parts sugar, how much water? One, two, three. So, well, this is a well worked veil. You notice your veil shouldn't be like this, but this is a veil that is well worked. And you don't want to waste your money, so you don't want to throw away this. Alright, when you're going into your hive, you must always stand behind the hive. Why? The bees come in from this way. You don't want to go in front of the hive to prevent the bees from going into the hive. You stay behind the entrance of the hive. Yes. And remember, this is your hive tool. The purpose of the hive tool is to remove the cover and separate parts of the beehive, right? So, now remove my cover. Then I puff a little smoke. So these are some of the containers that I use to feed the bees in. So Mr. Smith, why put sugar in these? Alright, so as I said before, you can feed with two, two ways. Either with container with the float, but the, I prefer to use the bag or the one with the dry sugar. So I place the sugar on top of the, the, high, the brood chamber. I'm remove some of the frames and put uh, and find space to put the um, the sugar. No. Yeah. 
So if you're going to play, use the liquid as well, you place the liquid on top of the boot chamber. And then you... All right. First, Mike, we'll see you feeding the sugar in the, the bag and ask how the bees go and get the sugar from the bag. But the bees are so creative. Now we that if the bees bore this bag and, and start to drink out the sugar. If you lift it up like this, you will not see it leaking. That's how creative they are. So they'll bore it and take the amount that they want and leave it. And the others come and feed the same way. So they, you don't have to bore the bag. If you bore the bag, the liquid will leak out in there and that will attract redans. And the redans will run away your bees. Okay guys, here we have it, how we feed our bees, so thank you for viewing, um, if you have any question, you can leave a comment in the comment section and you will get an answer, thank you. Yeah.